After I left, I waited for someone, a friend or her herself, to walk quickly up to me on the bus or in the bustling coffee shop and slap my face, spit on my hands, call me a bastard, a real motherfucker. By waited, by, <laughs> by waited, I mean I wanted to be revealed by some visible sign, a welt to ride the ledge of my cheek through the glass-littered streets. It didn't come, and it didn't come, and I grew desperate. I stared too long at strangers at Safeway. I bought boxes of clementines and ate them like a possum on the train. Cramming the rinds in the gap between the seat and the wall, I drank warm beer. I made no calls. I sat on a hot metal bench by a briny lake and tried to imagine the lives of the joggers passing in front of me, their joys, their sicknesses, and regrets. I was useless. I thought of my friend who wrote a novel over a long winter in Nova Scotia, read it once, and buried it in the copse of birches behind the house. <laughs> he chose the spot, he said, for its plainness, so he couldn't remember later and dig it up. <laughs> and in this way, one medicated season slid into the next without incident, gardenia bloom, persistent sun. I fell in love with the perfect voice of a Midwest radio DJ from a station I streamed on my phone, called in one request after another. I fell in love with a video of Stevie Nicks singing backstage to her makeup artist. Sheer cotton dress, their harmonies breezy and immaculate. I woke around noon to the thup thup of helicopters and another unsober voicemail from my dad angling for a loan. Went out in my underwear and find a and found a fine black powder settling on the windowsills, dusting the parked cars, a day moon suspended in orange haze. It turned out a man who would go months without getting caught was methodically setting fire to the half-built condo complexes one by one. One in 10,000 residents is a billionaire, the same article told me, though I could be forgiven for thinking the headlands were burning again, the intervals between disasters collapsing. I caught my neighbor's eye. She was stretching on her stoop in a fantastic powder blue tracksuit. What a world, I said, and she did not seem to hear it, and jogged across the narrow street, the moon behind her rising or sinking or neither. It was hard to know. <laughs>